You know, it's quite funny, really. If you can do that well enough, and consistently enough, you can go to college for free. That's right. This game right here, the game of basketball, can get you a free education, a degree from a major institution or even a small four-year college. But get school paid for, and that's the goal. I'm Brian Butler. My presentation today is on recruiting, the importance of it, the finances involved in it. From a recruit's perspective, the psychological factors, basically the background of the players, why coaches do what they do. The purpose of this is to shine some light on all of that for you. If you're a parent and your child is in love with basketball and may one day play in college, you should understand some of the rules that are involved in recruiting. If you're a kid, you're a basketball player. Again, rules are important. The NCAA has plenty of rules when it comes to recruiting that they don't necessarily explain very well. I'm here to do that today. You're gonna go 84 feet with me. Let's take a walk. First of all, let's discuss the important factors of it. College coaches, unlike high school coaches like myself, their whole career is based off of wins and losses. It's based off of this ball being put in that hole more so than their opponent. That's their job. So how do you get good at that job? Well, first of all, you gotta find the players. All right, that's a tough process. Some schools have a budget that can take them anywhere in the country to find whatever player they want. Smaller schools don't have that type of budget. Maybe they can go from state to state, locally in the southeast or midwest, wherever they're located. Is that really fair? Probably not. But the NCAA has rules that restrict a lot of college coaches from paying players to come to their institutions. Is that really fair? We'll talk about that too. First, let's talk about a few things. As young players, the psychological aspect of it. When you're young, seven and eight years old, this game's all about fun. At the end of the day, it is a game. But when you're playing AAU at seven, eight years old, and the AAU National Championship is ranking you as a player, it kind of becomes a job. And if your job at seven or eight years old is playing basketball to impress a college coach that's in the stands watching you play a tournament, it kind of takes the fun out of the game. As a guy who was, formerly, who was recruited at one point in his career, recruiting's a fun time. It's an enjoyable time. You feel wanted. You feel like you're really good at something and that people want to share that gift. Well, even then, I didn't know all the rules that were involved in recruiting. But there are plenty, a lot of which we're ignorant to. For example, college coaches can take you to dinner, but they're not allowed to pay for anything else. If they give you money, if they give you a gift, that's a rules violation for the NCAA. And their school can be sanctioned, and you can lose eligibility, meaning Instead of getting four years paid for for you to play this game and go to school for free, you'll no longer be able to play in college. Not a good thing, big no-no. Well, in the AAU, for high school kids, it's a great time to play against some of the top tier competition in the country. Don't get me wrong, competition's always a good thing. But if you're playing strictly to impress somebody, again, the fun is stripped from the game. And at the end of the day, this is just a game. Personally, I'm a high school coach. My job as a high school coach is to get younger players ready for that level of college basketball, especially the ones who are in love with this game. I teach fundamentals. So anytime you see a player who can work on fundamentals by himself and works hard, you want to do the best you can to help them pursue their dream of potentially playing college basketball. I mean, at the end of the day, this game is fun. Well. Oftentimes, there are players who come from troubled backgrounds, broken homes, poverty. It's true. And some players have nothing else in their life but this. So those are the guys you really want to approach and help and develop them so that they can get school paid for. This also helps them get free meals, a bed to sleep in. 
that's a good thing. For four whole years of their life, they're advancing their education and getting somewhere to live, something to eat every single day, and taken care of. That's not a rules violation. But they have to make sure that as they're doing that, they're not taking anything extra from other coaches or other players that could be considered a rules violation. The next thing I want to discuss is it fair that bigger institutions have a bigger budget to recruit than smaller institutions? Probably not. For example, North Carolina just won the national championship, probably because they got some great players. Well, those players are from all over the country. If you look at a lot of smaller schools, their players come from the local states surrounding them. It's all due to budget. Because North Carolina is a huge institution, they're allowed to recruit anywhere they want in the world. That's their budget. Smaller schools, such as maybe a South Alabama or a Southern Miss, are more localized. Every once in a while, they'll get a kid from somewhere far away. But to get that kid's attention takes a lot of money. The next thing we're going to talk about as we take a walk in 84 feet, as this kid is being recruited, and once he decides to sign, he or she signs with your institution, and plays for your school, are the meals and the bed and the workouts and the free living enough? There's a very grueling, grueling schedule when it comes to college basketball players, college athletes of any sort for that matter. So basically it becomes your lifestyle, their job. Don't you get paid for your job? I get paid for mine. So is it fair that college players of all sorts, especially basketball players in this case, are not getting paid? Well, let's think about that for a second. Major institutions get millions and millions of dollars just to play basketball games, to win basketball games and win championships. They generate a bunch of revenue from selling jerseys, from selling the, the players' likenesses to, to video games, from selling tickets. Bigger spots like the University of Kentucky, North Carolina, or Duke, let's go Duke. They sell plenty of tickets at a very high price. But players see none of that. So is it fair that 15 players on the basketball team don't get a chance to enjoy some of the revenue that their school is making from them? Probably not. But if the school decides to give them some of that revenue, that's a rules violation. Again, a big no-no. Well, let's get back to the purpose of our study. The purpose of our study is to shine some light on recruiting. Some of the common practices, number one, is locate the kind of player that you like. If you're a college coach, locate the kind of player that fits your system. Number two, be a people person. Be able to reach out to that player and from a psychological standpoint, understand what makes them tick and what gets their attention will make them want to come to your institution. And third, make them feel welcome. Be able to embrace young people, to connect with them. That makes for a good recruiter. One of the practices that is used in this age of information where you can tweet and retweet and text and use Instagram, most college coaches will give you a personal letter. Handwritten. Can you imagine having a handwritten letter from Coach K, from John Calipari, from Gino? Pretty impressive stuff. Well, that's a way of showing kids that you care and that you've taken the time out of your busy schedule to let them know you want them to play at your institution. Nothing better than that. Well, again, what a lot of people don't understand, parents and, and players, young players for that matter, is a lot of the schools, just to get attention, will send out typed letters with a fake signature at the bottom saying, hey, we know who you are, we'd love you to come to our school or come to our camp. Well, to me, that's kind of false propaganda. You know, a little bit of you know, false hope because they're really just generating this one letter and sending it out to player after player. But if you get a handwritten letter from whatever coach, that shows you're on the radar. That shows that this is going to become more than just a game. It'll soon be your job. Well, 
With that being said, we've discussed the revenues that the institutions make. We discussed the fact that players aren't getting paid and the fairness in that. The difference between institutions who can afford to take longer trips for recruiting and spend more money. Lastly, we want to talk about the benefits of college basketball. You know, young players need to understand that this is just a game. Yes, it can take care of your future. It can help you get a degree. And that's a great thing. But at the end of the day, it's a game. To college coaches, it's a lifestyle. It's a career. And they have to base their entire career off of getting your attention and making you feel at home to play for their school. So my advice to you is to go out, work on your game. Let this be an avenue to whatever you want. Let it be a chance to get your degree. But at the end of the day, remember, it's just a game.